The Three Faces of Eve is an old movie about a woman with multiple personality disorder. Well, meet the Eve of the Center Fire Cartridge World. Hi everyone. <laughs> the beloved but odd 257 Roberts confuses a lot of people because it seems to have multiple personalities. There's the 257 Roberts, and then there's the 257 Roberts plus P, and then there's the 257 Roberts actually improved, and a lot of guys just call it the Bob. <laughs> so no wonder there's confusion surrounding this cartridge. But it goes even farther than that. Why it became popular and then why it suddenly became unpopular is what we're going to talk about today while discussing any chance for it to be let's say, resurrected as a single cartridge that might serve multiple purposes. So, to understand the 257 Bob, we need to go back in time to roughly the 1880s and 1890s when there was suddenly a flurry of 25 caliber cartridges. And uh, back then, of course, that was considered small. So they were both target rounds and small game rounds. But once smokeless powder started to roll, the velocity started to go up. So we had things like the 2520, still around, a little Winchester cartridge, pretty puny, 2521 Stevens, 2525 Stevens, 2535 Winchester, 2525 Marlin, I think. There were just a bunch of them. But in 1906, Remington came out with one that really started to do something a little bit different had a little speed to it. They called it the 25 Remington, and it was chambered in that Model 8 auto-loading rifle, 1908. So that kind of gave somebody some ideas, and that somebody was Charles Newton, who came up with the 253,000 Savage. That, of course, was the first commercial cartridge to hit 3,000 feet per second. The speed race was on. They had a 87-grain bullet in order to do that. Well, once that happened, the Wildcatters started playing around. And somebody named Ned Roberts, he was a bit of a writer, wrote for the uh, American Rifle Magazine, American Rifleman, the NRA Magazine, and a few others. He was a, a hunter and a shooter, a target shooter. And he's playing around, and he got some advice from Townsend Wheeland uh, of the 35 Whalen uh, fame as well as Needner or Neidner, Adolf Neidner. He was uh, a heck of a wildcatter back in the day as well. And Roberts kept playing around. He was a real perfectionist, and he was using the 757 Mauser as his base, and he finally got it neck down with just the right shoulder angle and everything else to come up with the 25 Bob. That was around 1930 or so that he really finalized his plan for that one, and it became pretty popular pretty quickly, so much so that Remington picked it up as an official cartridge in 1934, and they called it the 257 Roberts, because he already had a 25 Remington, they didn't want to confuse the waters. So it stuck with the Roberts name honoring Ned Roberts. And it really was quite a hit because it drove oh, 100 grain to 117 grain, maybe 120 grain bullet, fast enough to make a darn good light recoiling deer hunting rifle. And that's where it really shined. And one of the oddest things I've ever read about it comes out of the Spear Handloading Manual 15. It reminded me to read that to you before this is all over because it is really strange. So here the Bob is in the 1930s, rolling along, getting to be quite popular as a small game cartridge, deer hunting cartridge, coyotes, uh, varmints, rock chucks, that sort of thing. And uh, it's got some competition from the 25 on six, but that was still a wildcat. And that was one of Neidner's or Neidner, I'm not sure how you pronounce his name. But uh, that was a little bit overboard and didn't have quite the flow enough powders back in the day to really make it shine. And that one languished until 1969 before I mean, you picked it up and made it an official cartridge. So at the time, this was really the only one on the market and it was competing against that 250 Savage, but it was about 50 to 100 feet per second faster. And that's why it was so popular. But what they say is that it sort of fell on its face in the 1950s, 1955 specifically, because of two other cartridges that popped up. And they supposedly 
drove the nails in the coffin. And that was the 243 Winchester and the 6mm Remington. At the time, it was called the 244. And they claimed that those two were superior because, as you can see, they're almost the same sizes, but they were shooting 24 caliber bullets instead of 25, and everybody fell in love because it was a wonderful dual-purpose cartridge for varmints and deer. And bingo, there you go, the Roberts started to fade away. I don't quite buy all of that stuff, and some of my research suggests that I'm on the right track here, and that's what we want to discuss. <laughs> Why exactly did it go away? Well, one of the problems was the 757 Mauser had a uh, maximum average chamber pressure setting of 51,000 PSI, which is pretty darn low, and yet they gave the Roberts 54,000, but that's still pretty darn low, and it really couldn't push its velocities to a peak pressures that's where this plus p thing comes in the 257 roberts plus p what does that mean in 1988 i think winchester thought this cartridge deserves a little more popularity we don't want it to fade away why are we loading it to such low pressures well because it was established back in the day at 54,000. they pushed it up to about 58,000 psi they picked up another 100 feet per second or so of velocity out of it but they had to call it the plus p and advertise it as suitable for modern firearms that are strong enough to handle it etc etc i question that because back in 1955 they took the same case essentially 757 Mauser made the 244 Remington which later became the six millimeter Remington and that has a maximum chamber pressure of 65,000 psi now what is going on with this chamber pressure stuff I don't fully understand uh I think it has to do with the rifles these things were chambered for that's usually what it is some of the older rifles with weaker steels and whatnot will have a lower pressure threshold. So I don't think it's necessarily the case. The brass case is not going to be blown apart by having higher pressures in it. So why can't we load that 257 Roberts to the same pressures as the 6mm? Because a lot of guys will take this, 250, or this 257 Roberts case, knock it down to 6mm, <laughs> make a 6mm Remington out of it, and suddenly they're, they're shooting at a 65,000 PSI. I don't know. Don't go launching an, an expedition on your own here <laughs> uh, and get in trouble. I always advise stick with what it tells you to do in the hand loading manuals and everywhere else because you can blow something up. But I honestly question why they have these different standards. I don't think it's because of the brass cartridges, but maybe there's something going on. At any rate, that's part of the confusion and the three faces of the 257 Roberts. The other thing that happened was back in the 50s or 60s, the uh, P.O. Ackley, Ackley Improved style came out. And what he did was he took the standard and he straightened out the sidewalls as he usually did, made it a 40 degree shoulder instead of this 20 degree, 20 and a half degree shoulder and got about three grains more powder in it, picked up another 100 to maybe 200 feet per second velocity over the uh, original. And man, that was really popular with Wildcatters. So a lot of people will take a 257 Roberts, ream it back out to the Ackley Improved size, and they come within 100 feet per second of the velocities you get out of a 25-06. So it really, as a short action cartridge, really shines. And as you can see, it is a true short action cartridge. Maximum cartridge overall length is 2.780, just underneath the 2.8 of the 308 Winchester family. So, true short action. Now, whether that's going to stand up with the long high BC bullets of today, I don't know. But then again, there are not that many long high C bullets in 25 caliber. And that's another strange thing that I think needs to be fixed so that the 25s can really shine, going, including 25 bot 6 and that unpopular, almost gone 25 WSSM. Those have enough powder capacity to drive some pretty long, heavy bullets. But whether or not the chambers are seated out long enough in the throats to handle those and the twist rates are high enough, I don't know. The uh, twist rate on that Roberts is about 1 in 10 generally. So you'd need to probably crank that up to 1 in 9 or 1 in 8 if you're going to use some really long, high BC bullets. So there's the confusion about the 257 Roberts. And I think that contributed to its unpopularity. But I think the biggest was the 243 Winchester 
and the six millimeter Remington, and everyone saying that those were superior. They drove your, your bullets faster and they were much more better suited for small game and environments and coyote hunting and that sort of thing. So I ran some ballistic numbers. And once again, we're gonna find out how close to accurate this stuff was. So let's look at our deer bullet performance. I am going to use 115 grain Nosler ballistic tip in the 257 Roberts, 95 grain ballistic tip in the 243 Winchester N6 millimeter Remington. Now let's just see how close these are. Cause there's some crazy idea that the uh, two 43s blew the 25 out of the water. Superior performance. Is that really the truth? So we're able to drive that 257 Roberts 2,800 feet per second. I zeroed it at 240 yards and that gave me a maximum point blank range on a six inch diameter target, 280 yards. That means at 280 yards, the dead on hold is gonna drop three inches. And the same with the 243 Winchester. Same maximum point blank range setup. I had to zero that one at 259 and carried out to 305 yards and a six miller Remington, 260 yards, carries out to 310 yards. All right, at 100 yards, look at those numbers. In green, go down and it's 2.8 inches, 2.7 inches, 2.6 inches. Pfft, no difference in the drop at 100 yards. And the wind deflection, 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, no big deal. Energy, plenty of it, 1726, 1708. 1823, so 257 hanging right in there. 200 yards, we might see a little bit difference now on our trajectories, but <laughs> half inch at the most, two inches of uh, plus. I mean, we're, we're shooting flat enough that we're still two inches high at 200 yards with the 257, two and a half inches high with the 243, 2.7 inches high with the six millimeter. And once again, that wind deflection right at three inches for all of them. And 1482 foot pounds of energy out of the 257, 1432 out of the 243. Really, the 257 superior for that. Not much, but a little bit. And the six millimeter Remington, because of its higher velocity, 1531 foot pounds of energy. Right in there. 300 yards ought to tell us the differences. Now we're starting to see some advantages of one over the other. What are they? Not a heck of a lot, but we're dropping 4.9 inches with that 257 compared to 2.8 with a 243 and just two inches of drop out of the six millimeter Remington. Still, that is not huge. And the wind deflection is right in there at around seven on all of them. And look at your energies, 12, 165 foot-pounds of energy out of the 257, 1192 out of the 243, so you've got more energy in this one, and 1278. This is the winner, 6 millimeter Remington, yet that's an extremely unpopular cartridge. No one even chambers for it anymore. Crazy. 257 Roberts, kind of the same thing, but they both are better than the 243, and this is the most popular of them. So I don't think it was legitimate to be claiming back in the 60s and 50s that the 257 Roberts had been upstaged by the 243 or the six millimeter, but that's the way it went. Now, let's get to that strange thing I said I read about, the strangest thing, and it's in the Spear Reloading Manual 15. They claim, and it says right here, the 257 Roberts is unashamedly a single purpose deer cartridge with little or no secondary application for predator or varmint hunting. And yet on the next page, they list the recipes for an 87 grain TNT varmint bullet going 3,386 feet per second. That sounds like a varmint purpose to me. So I don't know why they put that in there. But I did say, let's look at some varmint performance. And I ran some tables on that. So we are going to compare the 257 Roberts against this 243 as a varmint round. We'll use the 85 grain ballistic tip in the 25 and the 80 grain in the 24, both ballistic tips. So they both have the same ogives. They're gonna be similar. Sure enough, the BC is 0.329 on both of them. We're going to be able to drive that 257 Roberts 3,300 feet per second, according to the Nosler hand loading manual. And the 243 will go 3,400 feet per second. So there should be a bit of an advantage there. That's reflecting the higher pressures allowed in the 243, I assume. So as you can see, they both have a maximum point blank range getting right out there at about 320 yards. 
100 yard drops and drifts and everything else, my gosh, you're almost identical. There's only one foot pounds energy difference between the two. 200 yards, you're getting a little more separation. You got four foot pounds of energy advantage to the 243, big deal. And at 300 yards, where you really should start to see some significant differences, you've got a half inch drop advantage to the 243 Winchester. It's just a half inch flatter at 300 yards. And wind deflection, 7.6 versus 8.8, uh, that should be. No, that's 8 inches. 8 inches for the 257 Robertson, 7.6 inches, big deal for the 243. And the energy, again, you've got about 6 foot pound difference in the energy. They're almost identical. So where do they get off saying that this one is a grand uh, dual purpose varmint cartridge and deer cartridge and the 257 Roberts isn't? It's almost like they had some kind of a, a plot against the 257 Roberts. Well, why that happened, I will never know. So... My interpretation of all this stuff is that that 257 Roberts should have hung right in there. It still should be a darn popular cartridge, at least as popular as a 243. So if you find a used rifle chambered for a 257 Roberts and you're a hand loader, I would not be afraid of it. In fact, I would probably grab it. You could probably get it for a pretty good price because so few people today know and or appreciate the 257 Roberts. And in a modern high strength rifle, bold action, say like the Rugers, and there were quite a few of those came chambered in it, um, or the number one, oh, that single shot Ruger, that thing, <laughs> it could really be effective. 26 inch barrel in it probably, give you a little more reach and a little more velocity out of that. You can get your pressures way up on it, plus P stuff. So then your other option, of course, is do I have a gunsmith chamber it out to the Ackley Improved version. If you're hand-loading anyway, why not? And then you're right on the heels of that 25-06. And you've got yourself a short action, 25 caliber, throat that thing, get a faster twist barrel put into it. You're rocking and rolling. You're gonna really have some fun. So that's my take on the 257 Roberts. Got a split personality, no fault of his own, but for some reason, everybody got a little bit weirded out on that one. So I think the 257 Eve uh, is a cartridge worth remembering, and I think it should bounce back. You know, enough people get interested in, maybe it will. But even if they don't, and you have one, you're going to be probably the only kid on the block with a 257 Bob. Hey, this is Ron Spomer. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time, hunt honest and shoot straight. Mm -hmm.